another thing you can do to market yourself is advertise your client testimonials. So if you have any testimonials that are like really good, that really hits the mark, let's say your client says, you know, before I came to work with, let's say the coach's name is Lisa. Uh, <laughs> before I came to work with Lisa, I was struggling. I was super skeptical about getting a coach, but then I decided to give it a chance. I jumped in with Lisa. We worked through five different layers within my inner beliefs and I realized how much I was holding myself back. And then I, I got a new pay rise after working with Lisa. I was able to double my income and, uh, and, and I'm able to build my online business as well on the side and I'm bringing in you know extra income and I feel so happy. So like that's a great testimonial, right? If I had something like that, great. What I would do is I'd get behind it and run some ads to that and then say, do you feel like you're struggling like Lisa was? Would you like to work with a coach that would be able to break you through these, these layers, right? Advertise your testimonials. Make it nice and straightforward. They click on it. It takes them to a, a sales page. You have an offer there of maybe one-on-one -on -one coaching or group coaching, or maybe it's a discovery call where they jump on for 20 or 30 minutes with you. You check in to see if it's worth, you know, bringing them on board if they're a good fit and away you go. So that's a great way to be able to market. Uh, another way is to, to guest blog. So writing, but I would only write for like really big blogs, really big websites to get lots of exposure. Otherwise it's a waste of time. Just being honest, right? You want to get in front of lots of eyeballs and you want to have what we call a call to action at the end. So if you can write an article, share some value, but also call to action where you encourage people to join you for your coaching, that's a great way to market yourself on other people's platforms that have built that up for you. You don't have to build it up yourself or have your own blog. Um, jumping on other people's podcasts as well. Great way to be able to reach a new audience, but you want to make sure that they're getting plays. So you could ask them you know, how many plays they're getting um, see if it's the right niche audience that's tuning into it. Otherwise, it's a waste of time, okay? So you want to be intentional about where you put your time, money, and energy. Uh, you can also invest in paid advertising, which I mentioned in the branding video that you just watched. Uh, but ultimately, we, what we call uh, pay-per-click, so PPC, pay-per-click advertising, uh, is the best. <clears throat> you can do it either through uh, search ads on Google. So when you, people search for a coach, you could pop up near the top. Um, Instagram ads, YouTube ads, Facebook ads, like Meta who runs Facebook and Instagram, you can run it through uh, the the dashboard, the ads dashboard or ads manager in, in your business account on Facebook. I would never do boost posts because they just take so much money from you and they don't let you reach many people. It's always better to jump through the Meta platform and add, um, run ads and advertise through Facebook and Instagram that way, okay? And then on top of it, you can also do like TikTok ads, uh, LinkedIn ads, YouTube ads, which are doing really well as well. Um, yeah, YouTube, YouTube does well. Uh, I know quite a lot of people that are using that and it's helping them a lot, but you've got to be ready whenever you're advertising to create or shoot at least 10, 15, 20 videos, like different versions of different titles, different messaging, different like hook at the start. Um, different backgrounds and so on and different themes and use props, play around with some ideas, but you've got to be ready to test like 10, 15, 20, maybe 30 or 40 different ads. Advertisers that do the best will typically shoot 50 or more ads and they'll run it and see which ones are the top two or top three performing ads. And then they cut all the other ones out because sometimes you can waste money running ads that don't really convert. And also Facebook and Instagram, YouTube, they don't want to keep serving ads that don't do well because it looks bad on their platform as well. So you've got to be prepared to create a bunch of content for ads to promote it and watch it vigilantly until you can dial it in. And uh, it's always good to have like an ad expert that can help you with that. Another thing is search engine optimization. So on Google being Yahoo, uh, you want to be able to increase your authority and credibility there. You want to, if you create a website, you want to be able to create like lots of content that leads that's on your website that will lead, we call them the spiders, the search engine spiders. They go out every day and search around on the net to see if there's any new information. And then they come back and then they tell Google like which websites have the best value content or have the most robust content and, and interlinking and all that. You've got to learn SEO. You can watch videos on YouTube for that if you need to. But some coaches I know, that don't spend as much time on social media. I have spent a lot of time writing some really great articles on their website. 
and have put like really great videos on there and have great offers. And they just made it like really robust with lots of great information using the keywords like coach, find a coach, work with a coach, breakthrough, break your limiting beliefs, whatever the topics are that they're coaching on. And then Google after a while sees them and goes, wow, this is really great content. So they rank you higher when people are searching for coaches. So you could even run a search right now on Google, like, you know, coach in Los Angeles, coach in Sydney, Australia, or wherever you are and see like what websites rank the highest. Um, there'll be some ads at the top, obviously, because you pay to be prioritized, but you can have a look through some of those links and see like, what are those people doing on their website to get their search engine up? optimization happening and ranking higher in the search engines. So that can help you too, if you want to go that route. That's a longer game play, by the way. Like I'm talking like six months to a year, two years, three years, five years to really build that up. So that's a longer play. You could get like a virtual assistant to help you with that, to write articles for it that relate to the content and the topics that you speak on, to be able to keep building out robust links and content to rank you higher in the search engine over time. So organically, you're just starting to get clients reaching out to you. But a lot of a lot of what's happening right now in the coaching space is people aren't being passive anymore. People are usually working with people that are directly connecting with them and talking with them, not like someone that's got a banner on a website. You know, you have to get lots of exposure on that to be able to encourage people to, or even to get your numbers up and have leads come in, right? So there's, SEO, search engine optimization. The next one is email marketing. So you can use anything from like MailChimp. Um, you can use ActiveCampaign. You could use uh, Aweber. Uh, there's a number of other platforms too out there that uh, you can use to be able to capture email addresses, right? So you want to offer something. You can offer what we call a lead magnet. So maybe it's like a mini workshop. Maybe it's an uh, audio recording. Uh, maybe it's a PDF guide, maybe it's a quiz, uh, maybe it's like uh, something for free that you've got that like brings great value. And in return, in order for the person that's seen this to get it, they have to input their email address, name, and maybe a phone number. Uh, so that way you, they go into your database and your ecosystem and then you can email them. But you got to remember, it's better to nurture your email. So you have to have what we call a sequence in place. So when somebody registers and comes in, they need to be nurtured. You need to look after them. Maybe have like some pre-programmed emails that they receive that goes out every couple of days and it's all programmed in. So every time you get a new email subscriber in, they'll get every two days, get an email that goes to them and it just warms them up. And then you can offer them. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about jab, 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 right hook. He's like, don't pitch them straight away when they come in, give them some value. So jab, jab, jab. So it's like value, value, value which could be like information that you share, how-to advice, maybe an inspirational story, maybe a testimonial, and then you offer your coaching service after. And you can just have that on loop and you can create like 20, 30, 40 emails in a whole sequence that goes for like two or three months or longer. Or maybe you just keep nurturing them for years. Uh, but that's another way to, to really email market. And the thing I like about email marketing is it doesn't rely on social media Sometimes social media can play around with the algorithms so they don't give you as much reach. They, you know, really mess with people on that at times. So email marketing means you can reach people better. You just don't want to go into the spam or junk email inbox. So you want to keep your emails clean. You don't want to do too much promo. You don't want to do clickbaity stuff and and get yourself into trouble because then you'll go into the uh the spam folder. So you just want to be nurturing, engaging. You want to ask your people questions, get them to reply to the email. This shows the email servers that you are a real person and that your people love you. And that way you, they'll keep you in the, like the white flag list. You're a healthy uh, company and they'll just allow you to go into the general or primary inbox. Okay. Uh, and the last thing you can do to market yourself effectively is to be able to do influencer marketing. And this is proven to be pretty good. Um, I'm not saying like go to the biggest influencers with millions, unless you've got a personal relationship. With some, most of the time, they'll turn you down unless you pay a lot of money. But sometimes the micro influencers are just as effective or even more effective. And what I mean by micro influencers, it could be somebody with like 5,000 followers or 10,000 or 15 or 20. And you could pay them. Some people pay them $100, $50 a post, $150, $200 a post. And uh, 
you just see like if somebody is in your niche area and they have a client base, an audience that is in alignment with you, it could be worth you spending a couple hundred bucks to promote. I don't know. Like I can't say, you know, don't come back at me and say, Joel told me to do this and it didn't work because sometimes it depends on the audience. It depends on your messaging. It depends on how that person is promoting you, but you could create Insta stories or videos or posts and get that person. You say, Hey, I'll pay you this much. If you could share, you know, my offer, my coaching service or, or maybe the feature on their platform. And then you have a call to action. You always have to have a call to action to get people from there to come over to, to, to work with you or to get on a call with you. Right. Uh, so that's influencer marketing. And uh, I know some people that, that are at the point where they just pay for influencer marketing. They don't even run ads on Facebook or Instagram because influencer marketing is working really well for them. But you got to make sure you have an offer that like a lot of people are really excited about. Then it makes sense to spend that money. Uh, if you don't have that, keep working on your offer, keep testing and keep interacting with your people to find out what they need. Keep getting testimonials. Testimonials are going to help you to market yourself well without you having to like boast and brag because they speak for you. They edify you, right? That's the key. So share your testimonials as often as possible along with great messaging, speaking specifically into the pain point that that person's struggling with and show that you have a solution and that you care. That's what it's about. Get results. If you're not getting results, then you're not a coach. When you get results, show the results. That's what makes you a great coach. And people will believe that you actually can get results when that happens. All right. So anyway, I hope this was uh, helpful. But just remember, by using these online marketing strategies, you can build your online presence. You can attract potential customers and you can grow your business. Uh, but you've got to be committing your time, money and energy into this. Okay. We're well, just keeping it real with you how bad do you want it if you can see that you desire to be on stages or impacting so many people worldwide then you've got to get down and be doing these things this is what all the top coaches in this space are doing okay so anyway i hope that was helpful i hope you're enjoying confident coach if you want to go next level with your branding and your marketing then you can jump into influential coach uh, i have 32 calls in there live nash Mackey, who's in here he's taught a few lessons he's also teaching and holding everyone accountable in there and and my coaches in there are, are blowing up they're doing really well they're implementing what they need to implement they're crafting their offer their messaging is tight they know how to sell their their programs and their coaching so you know that's where they learn to get clients and to be able to scale their coaching business so if you're into that then jump across to influential coach